Hi everyone, welcome again. So today we'll be talking about the industrial chemistry topic. Uh, it's an option topic, remember? So in f previous lessons we talked about chemical equilibrium and what the equilibrium constant was. So now we're going to talk about temperature in particular and how it affects the equilibrium constant and do the other um, parts of equilibrium, pressure, volume and concentrations, affect the chemical equili uh, the equilibrium constant as well. Okay. So factors affecting equilibrium and Kp, the equilibrium constant. Temperature is the only factor that affects Kp. Okay, so that's the first thing that we need to know. Temperature is the only thing that affects the value of this Kp. Now, we, we would think that maybe pressure and volume, the concentration, because they somehow distort the equilibrium, shouldn't they affect Kp as well? So if that's the question on your mind, hopefully just stick around and we'll we'll show you, we'll work through why each of these other things don't affect the equilibrium constant. So these pressure, the changing in pressure or concentration of, of products and reactants has no effect on Kp. Okay? Now, the difference that they have is that they only affect the position of equilibrium. So where the equilibrium sits rather than the equilibrium constant itself. Okay? So let's look at concentrations of uh, first. So changing the concentration of products or reactants has no effect on Kp, as we mentioned. Let's look at the Harper process with this reaction, which we should be well familiar with by now. Now, if we increase the concentration of N2, so from this diagram you can see there's a sharp increase here. The concentrations of the other chemicals adjust to keep the chemical equilibrium, or to keep the Kp constant. So as you can see, as this spikes up, this starts to decline, uh, this starts to increase as well. Uh, also H2 is increasing. So you see that more of this is being created, and you see that there's a decrease as right after the increase has happened. Now that shifting of concentrations essentially just is done simply to keep Kp at the same number. That's why it's called the equilibrium constant, because as you sort of distort the equilibrium with pressure and concentration, the equilibrium will always try to keep that number the same. So increasing the pressure also has no effect on Kp. So as you can see when the piston comes down and compresses this gas, there's a readjustment of chemical concentrations to keep Kp the same. Now the relative number of moles in any system is related to the pressure of the system. Okay, so obviously any modification of the pressure will result in an adjustment of concentrations to keep Kp constant. Okay, remembering that Kp is trying to remain constant because that is part of the definition. So the, the argument, because the concentrations are changing, the argument is similar to the concentration argument from before. That the moles will just readjust so that Kp remains the same. Now the effect of temperature. So remembering that Kp was just Kp was equal to A A oh sorry C C D over A A B B. So that was our way of calculating Kp, right? From chemistry. Now, just this is just for additional knowledge. You don't need to know this for HSC, but this will help me to justify all the stuff I've been saying. But this can be calculated in this way. But at the same time, it can be calculated with this equation from thermodynamics. Now, thermodynamics is the study of sort of heat and its motion. So Kp can be calculated as the exponential of minus the change in G time divided by RT. So R is a constant. It's the gas constant. Um, don't worry too much what that means, but it's just a constant. It doesn't change. And delta G is related to the chemical concentrations. Okay. Now, delta G is just another number. It's just a property of the chemicals themselves. Okay. 
So the only thing that can change, really, is t. And so by changing t is the only way to change kp. OK? So that wraps up today's lesson on factors affecting the equilibrium constant. So the main thing to take out of today's lesson is simply that temperature is the only thing that can alter the value of kp. Changing the concentration or changing the pressure will cause a change in the concentrations of chemicals, but that change sort of keeps kp constant no matter what, as long as there's no change in t. Right? So we'll move on to the question segment. So first question is, since kp can be expressed with this equation, why doesn't changing the concentrations of chemicals change kp? Now, this is sort of a better way of showing you why it works. Okay? So the change of concentration only causes a, change, a shift in the equilibrium. We mentioned that in the first part of today's lesson. This means when the concentration changes, the other chemical concentrations also shift to counteract that change by La Chatelier's principle. And so the chemical equilibrium, uh, so the Kp value doesn't change. So let's say C increases, right? Remembering that we've got the equation Okay, that's our equation. Now if C increases, what happens to D? D must decrease because the reactions will start to go this way. Right? So this will decrease slightly. Now what will happen to A and B in terms of their concentrations? They'll also go up slightly. So as you can see, if C increases, D decreases, right? So Kp has sort of stayed the same a little bit. But if you increase the bottom number, the whole number itself decreases also. So this whole number, if you increase the value of this, then Kp will have a reduction in number. But C went up. So can you see that all of these reductions sort of offset that increase in, K, uh, in C? So that's one way of visualizing what's happening when we change the concentration of certain chemicals. OK? So moving on. Assuming the temperature doesn't change, why does Kp not change when the pressure of the system is changed, despite the chemical concentrations changing? So the pressure is related to the concentration of the reactants and products in the system. Okay, That's one thing. So when the pressure is changed, the concentrations of the chemicals adjust, such that Kp remains constant. Okay, similar to what I just said, if the concentrations increase or decrease, then their effect is sort of counteracted by the other chemicals. And so we have Kp always remaining constant. Okay. So that ends today's lesson on the factors affecting Kp. Now remembering, all you need to really know is that temperature is the only factor that affects the value of Kp. The other ones don't, they just affect the, sh the equilibrium position, not the value of Kp. So that's what you should take out of today's lesson. In, next, in the next lesson, we'll look at how to calculate Kp and practical ways of using Kp. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.